The free cloud-based stream elements overlay editor is perfect for making a beautiful and easy to manage streaming layout. That said, with so many different tools and menus, it can be a little intimidating to jump into. In today's video, we're going to give you all the tools you need to pilot this ship and become a streaming overlay expert. Let's lift off. If you're new to Stream Elements, I highly recommend checking out our new Ultimate Beginner's Guide. But for now, here's a quick reminder on how to get to the Overlay Manager. From your dashboard page at StreamElements.com dashboard, both of your main stops are going to be here with the Streaming Tools menu on the left. The Overlays Gallery is where you'll go and select pre-made visual assets from three different categories. Overlays, which add a full graphic package and scenes to a stream, Alerts, which play a visual event to celebrate viewer support events, and Widgets, which add a wide variety of visual information and games. If you've saved one of our overlays or you want to build one from scratch, you'll find everything you need in the My Overlays tab. All you have to do is click the New Overlay button for a new one or the Edit button for a saved template. And you're here! Welcome to the Overlay Editor and enjoy your stay! So, like I mentioned, there's a lot going on here and a lot of things that you can customize, but we're going to make you a pro. We're going to go over all the important UI elements, as well as giving you additional keyboard shortcuts to make editing as easy as possible. In general, your main workflow is going to look like this. One, you'll open the editor and use it to assemble a streaming overlay in place with images, videos, alerts, widgets, and more. Two, you'll go to the top right and click this button to copy a browser URL of your overlay. And three, finally, you will paste that URL as a browser source in your streaming software, such as OBS Studio with our SE Live plugin. Your overlay will magically appear as a lightweight source that you can then pair with things like gameplay in your webcam. For today's tutorial, I'll be using our existing Blue Fire Super theme from our Overlays Gallery. Just as a reminder, all of our themes are in 1080p, but if you're creating a new layout, you'll have the option to change your resolution from the start. If you ever need to rechange the resolution of a layout, click the three dots in My Overlays, go to Properties, and then alter it there. Now that we're back, let's dig in. This huge space here is your visual editor, and this is where you can click on individual elements that you've added and move them around, either with your mouse or the arrow key if you need exact precision. Whenever you want to add a new element to your layout, you'll do it with this blue plus icon. The top four are going to be your most common options, which are alert tools for your alert boxes and tipping tools, engagement widgets for things like countdowns, contests, and media requests, labels for dynamically changing text such as sub goals or your newest supporters, and finally, the static and custom menu, which you'll use for adding things like images, text, and videos. The bottom toolbar next to the plus gives you a few more things to play with. The Emulate Bell is its own separate world, which you'll use just for testing your alert box to see what it will do for specific events, such as subscribers or tips. The Undo and Redo buttons are pretty self-explanatory. They allow you to go forward and back in time, and you can also use Control z or Control y here as well if you don't want to click the buttons. The next four are all viewing options for moving around the canvas. Zoom in, zoom out, reset zoom to view something at its original resolution, and finally fit to screen, which is the mode you'll likely use the most, which lets you see your whole layout no matter what resolution your window's currently in. Next up is snapping, which makes visual elements cleanly line up with each other when you move one next to another. If you turn it off, you can overlap visual elements on top of each other however you'd like. And finally, we got the mute button, which you can use to turn volume on or off, primarily for the sounds that play when you're testing your alerts. Next up is the top bar, where we've already covered the all-important copy URL button. The help button can give you some tips if you get stuck, either by watching the in-browser visual demo or by linking you directly to our support Discord. The session data menu is crucial for users who are working with labels, such as the most recent subscriber or setting up specific milestone goals. The Labels menu lets you view your recently recorded activity, and you can also manually reset them here if for some reason you want to start a clean slate. By default, in the Settings tab, Streaming Session Data resets 15 minutes after the end of each stream that you do. This is a slider that you can toggle on and off if you want to change that. The Goals menu is where you can view long-term goal progress, such as the total followers, revenue, or subs over a long period of time. If you want to reset that, you can also do it here, and these are separate from your individual session data. Moving back to that top bar, the Preview button lets you see in browser for what your overlay looks like without the grid behind it. And lastly, possibly most importantly, is the big blue Save button. 
Maybe you've made a bunch of changes in the editor, but you haven't noticed a change yet in your OBS source. Usually when I have this issue, I found that I just forgot to save. And finally, to the left, we've got the big one, the layers menu, which lets you see a stack of all of your overlay elements with the ones on the top of the list appearing the furthest forward in the visual editor. If you highlight an individual layer, you can click the eyeball icon to change its visibility. Invisible layers look more transparent than usual, but they won't show up at all in your final product. For example, this layout gave us a 4-3 aspect ratio webcam as an option if you don't want to use the 16-9 one. Because it's set to invisible, it doesn't actually appear in the overlay when we import the browser source into SE Live later. The second icon, the lock, allows you to permanently fix a layer in place. This can be useful if you know you want to keep a layer in a single location and you don't want to accidentally move it. You can also use the layers menu to create groups, which let you assemble multiple elements into a single batch for easy moving. The blue flare super theme doesn't use groups, so this is a good chance to mess with that feature from scratch. To select multiple layers at once for grouping, hold shift and click each element. Then click the group icon to stick everything together. If you want to separate elements again, just click ungroup. You can also use that shift clicking technique in the visual editor in order to multi-select and move more than one object at a time, even if you aren't using groups. By double clicking an element's name, either a group or an individual layer, you can rename it, which helps a ton with organization. I like groups because they give you this little arrow that can collapse a bunch of layers if you aren't currently working with them. One issue that does trip users up using groups is that clicking a group in the visual editor selects your entire group at once. If you want to select just one thing while still keeping your group, hold the Alt or Option key and click to cycle through single selections. Duplicate instantly copies your selected layers, either the layout that you're currently working on or even sending your selection to another overlay that you own. And finally, and this is where you'll spend most of your time if you want to fine tune an individual layer, are the context sensitive menus. When you click on a layer, you'll see things like settings and position. The position, size, and style button is more straightforward. Here you can change the size of your selection with exact numbers, change your opacity, or simply center something. You can also resize in the visual editor by clicking and dragging the edge of an element, but I recommend holding down the shift key when you do, which preserves your aspect ratio. The settings menu opens all of your options depending on what type of element that you're working with. For image and video elements, this is where you can swap one type of media into another one. For text elements, the settings box is where you'll enter your message. Text in particular gets its own separate menu called text settings, and that's where you'll change everything like fonts, colors, and styles. For widgets such as the countdown timer, that's where you'll edit your timer settings and formats. For alert boxes, your starting menu lets you choose which alerts you want to enable, and the gear changes further settings. The main menu lets you change how your alerts look and sound, variations allow you to run alerts that only trigger with special parameters, and animation settings let you change how alerts enter and exit the screen visually. There's a lot you can do to fine tune your alerts as a streamer, and we're working on an advanced alerts guide to dive even deeper into this topic in our next video. But for now, that's everything you need to know for the overlay manager. You might not use all these features all the time, but we wanted to make sure that you know where everything is so that you can use it when you need it. Next up, I want to talk about a quick feature that I think really separates the stream elements experience, and that is live editing. When you're streaming, one of the hardest things to do is to fix a broken overlay while you're trying to entertain an audience or play a video game live. Because our overlays are cloud-based, Stream Elements has an editor feature that allows other people to edit your overlays live from anywhere in the world. This is a perfect tool for moderators or show co-runners to help out so that you can keep your focus on the show. To enable an editor, click your account icon in the top right, then click your avatar to enter the account menu. You can add editors under the My Managers tab. All you have to do is click Editor and then generate an invite link to send to the person that you want to help out. It might not be a feature that a lot of you use, but this is my personal favorite feature that I think a lot of users haven't heard of yet. The more time I spend in the editor, the more comfortable I get with it, and the more powerful a streaming resource it becomes. That's the end of today's video, but it is not the end of the journey for Stream Elements and the Overlay Editor. If you check the link in the description, you can sign up for the beta of our updated Overlay Editor. We're constantly taking your feedback into account, and we're putting some serious work into updating our Overlay Editor with the constantly changing needs of today's streamers. And if you're still around, I just want to say thank you for watching today's tutorial video. 
please consider clicking the like, subscribe, and bell icons so that you can follow along with this channel and get updates for every new Stream Elements video. I'll see you guys next mission with another Stream Elements tutorial.